Okay. Thank you very much for joining our uh, final session for the risk management uh, training course. Uh, in the previous sessions, we covered the risk management uh, basics, concepts, uh, features, uh, advantages. Uh, also, we uh, went through the risk management uh, processes uh, related to the uh, process of handling the risk management in any organization. And we said that we have uh, eight uh, important or eight main processes for the risk management. Number one, it will be the risk management uh, program process where you have to define the uh, factors which it will affect the uh, risk management and how you will uh, assure the uh, consistent results by defining the uh, impact, uh, uh, likelihood, uh, how you would define assets, its value for the organization, how you would define the risk level, uh, what are the treatment options, uh, what are the uh, risk level uh, categories, how you will develop security controls, and how you will monitor the risks. Then we had the second process related to the organization context, and we said that the organization cost context is the factors, uh, internal and external factors, which are affecting the organization and uh, affect its way in uh, performing uh, business in the market and achieve their goals and uh, objectives. And the, the, the best example which we highlighted here, if we want to compare between a factory, which is we are specialized in uh, manufacturing the uh, weapons, it will be totally different from the one which it will be uh, specialized in uh, manufacturing of sweets or biscuits or whatever, any other uh, products. Uh, process number three, it will uh, it cover the risk identification. You have to define the assets, you have to define asset value, you have to define vulnerabilities in the assets, threads for the assets, existing controls, and what will be the impact. Then the risk analysis and the risk analysis means it will cover the impact and the likelihood, where the risk uh, level, it will be equal to impact level times likelihood level. Uh, based on the risk level, you will be able to categorize the risks and the importance of uh, these risks for the organization. Then we have the process of risk treatment. We have four options for the risk treatment. We have the acceptance, we have the mitigation, we have the uh, transfer, and finally we have to accept. Uh, the last step, it will be the risk acceptance, how we can accept the risk. We said that it has two different concepts in the acceptance where the management, we have to accept the risk management, the risk uh, plan, uh, uh, risk treatment plan, and the owner, we have to accept it as well. Besides, we have to accept the residual risks. And finally, we have the risk monitoring, and the risk monitoring, as usual, when we are speaking about any process which require uh, continual improvement and uh, continuity operations as a risk management, we have to think about monitoring and measuring because this it will uh, provide you enough information for the future improvement and for the uh, uh, excellency of the service. Uh, we have to monitor the assessed risks to make sure that this risk level, it's not uh, changed, it. the residual risk, it's not changed. It. We have to uh, monitor the services and activities to make sure that we don't have any new uh, emergency or emerging uh, risks. Uh, we have to monitor the security controls and its uh, ability to uh, fulfill or achieve its objectives. Uh, finally, you have to monitor the environment which you are living in because we have a lot of factors which can cause change as in the uh, organization context, in the market, in the uh, technology. There are a lot of changes which can affect the organization. These are the main processes based on the ISO 27005 for any risk management and 
Today, uh, we will uh, try to apply these concepts on a practical example, virtual example. I know that we uh, have the concept of the uh, theory, but we want to understand how we can implement it. We want to go through each process and check how this it will be, or we can uh, how we can implement it in the organizations. Today, inshallah, we will uh, go through the uh, uh, practical uh, example. This is a scenario. We had a virtual uh, scenario. This virtual scenario, it's a company called XYZ Company. This XYZ Company, it is reside in uh, Saudi Arabia. And they have, uh, they are specialized, specialized in developing on-shelf applications and customized applications. Then we are uh, software developers. We have on-shelf and we have customized application based on customer needs and requirements. Uh, they have four branches uh, in the kingdom, in Riyadh, Jeddah, Damam, and Jubail. And also we have an office in India. Then this is the scenario which we have. What is the uh, mission of uh, the vision of the XYV company? They want to become the leaders in the digital transformation market. And this means that the, the, the vision which we have here, they want to start uh, a new uh, technology uh, in the, the digital transformation. They are a software company and we are able to develop some programs which it will help in the digital transformation. What is their mission? We mission that we want to have standard approach and tools for the development of the software. Then this will be a, a new technique or a standard for uh, developing whatever any applications required for digital transformation. What are their goals and objectives? Here, the list of goals and objectives. I will go, I will leave you for one minute just to go through the uh, points. Of course, my friends, what we are doing now, as we mentioned that it is very important before thinking about the risk management and how we can implement it, that we have to understand very carefully the organization which we want to implement the risk management for it. We have to understand the organization context, what are the factors affecting the organization and doing the business, what are the risks, what will be the uh, risk uh, appetite, uh, are they willing to accept risk or not? Uh, all this information, you will not be able to get it until if you went through this information, which we, I provided to you, how we will be able to achieve the goals and objectives, what are these goals and objectives, what is the mission, what is the vision, and so on. When these are the information which are very important, which you have to spend a, a long time to uh, 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 study, you have to, make, to understand this and make an interview uh, with the management to understand their uh, understanding of the uh, risks, their appetite for risks, and so on. Uh, and by the way, you will be really surprised when you will understand that in the future, you will find that even there may be some companies, uh, we have the same activities in the market, but they will have a total different risk uh, appetite. Some of the organizations, we are looking for the uh, profit, some others for reputation, some others for market share, and so on. According to their expectations and their goals and objectives, you will find this appetite, it will be changed. Okay. What is the uh, structure of XYZ company? We have the CEO, this is the big boss. Then we have four departments. We have financial department with CFO, we have HR manager, we have sales manager, and we have a technical manager. Under the technical manager, we have another three departments. These are the systems and infrastructure manager. He is responsible for the uh, PCs, the network, and whatever, any uh, infrastructure. Uh, we have uh, a service desk, and this service desk who are uh, support the users who are buying their software, even if it's on shelf or uh, customized. 
and you, the uh, developer uh, manager and of course the developer manager who are um, managing the team uh, of the developers. Uh, sales managers, we have a sales representative, HR, we have HR representative and financial, we have my financial uh, accounting accountants. We, uh, 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 what we can say, we are the structure of the organization or the company XYZ. Okay, if we want to understand how we will implement mm -hmm. the project manager management, this means that we have to find some uh, risk scenarios. We want to apply some the, our information on real risks. I uh, chose three risks. Then we will be able to apply all what did we studied in the last two sessions in uh, on these scenarios. Scenario number one, that customers and the partners' privacy data leakage. This means that the XYZ company we have a database for their customers uh, and uh, customers' information. For some reasons, the, uh, this information it was leaked and this is considered as uh, a privacy issue because this information where customers and partners were leaked. This, of course, a big problem. Well, just imagine if you are a software developer and you, you are attacked or you, your data uh, is compromised, uh, I don't think that this it will be a good reputation uh, for you at all. Uh, scenario number two, that customers' applications uh, code uh, is stolen. The code for the applications which the XYZ company is developed for the customers is stolen from their network. Again, this is a crisis because this means that if the hacker he was able to get this uh, code, he will be able to go through the code. He may find some information which he can utilize it to attack these companies and collect their uh, data. The last scenario, it will be the uh, denial, uh, distributed denial of service for the website. Uh, distributed denial of service for their website. This is the uh, three scenarios which we will uh, go uh, through it, inshallah. Okay, that's good. Just to uh, refresh your mind, these are the uh, risk management processes for the uh, risk management program, context establishment, risk identification, risk analysis, risk evaluation, risk treatment, risk acceptance, risk monitor, and the uh, other two important topics which are related to ISO 27001, if you are uh, conducting the uh, uh, what we can say, the risk management for ISO certification. Okay, then now let's check how the XYZ, it will start, uh, XYZ company, they will start to implement the risk management process, uh, processes in its uh, company. Number one, what is, we have to define, what are the risk management objectives? What are the risk management objectives? It's very important. I told you we have to define exactly what are the objectives because this it will define a lot of important information in the risk program uh, management program. Here in XYZ company, we want to protect and secure the XYZ company assets to achieve their goals and objectives. Excellent. And we want to make risk assessment to know what are the risks against their network when we will be able to protect these assets. Also, we have to identify and classify the risks. Okay, then this is considered as a part of the previous one, because if I know the assets, I have to define the risks, then I will be able to uh, check what will be the uh, effect of uh, the or impact of these risks on our uh, goals and objectives and how it will affect the organization uh, from uh, achieving its goals and objectives. Uh, evaluate XYZ company risks and to find the appropriate actions. These appropriate actions, which you can call it the controls. 
you have to define what are the uh, assets and what will be the treatment. And then you have to find the controls. Then by the end of the day, XYZ company, we want to have the risk management program because we want to protect their assets when we would be able to achieve their objectives, business objectives and goals. Okay, we have to define, of course, the acceptable le uh, risk level uh, just for these people who forgot the acceptable risk level that this is the uh, risk uh, level of the risk which is acceptable by the organization where it can live with this risk without affecting its business or its uh, existing. Uh, finally, we want to monitor and measure the uh, risks. Okay as we agreed that it's very important to measure the uh, monitor, the measure the risks, then you will be able to figure out if there is any changes in the risk uh, levels uh, to understand if there is any uh, new uh, imposed risks and to uh, check if the security controls are able to achieve uh, its objectives. Okay, now the XYV company, they were able to define the objectives of the risk management. And usually, as we mentioned, we want to protect the company's assets. What will be the role and the commitment of the management and the leadership? This is very important. If you remember, we mentioned that uh, 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 risk management, it will not work until if we have full uh, uh, support from the management and the commitment from the management. Then, what the management will do in XYV company related to the risk management program, they will provide the required resources for the risk management program. It may be funding, financial, people, facilities, hardware, software, whatever any uh, facilities are required. It can be transportation, it can be uh, meeting rooms, it can be whatever any resource required to implement the risk program management. They have the commitment that they will provide these resources for the, uh, uh, the people who are responsible for implementing the risk management program. Also, it is very, very, very important that the management to uh, conduct or communicate the importance of the risk management to the employees. It is not enough that the risk management, the team, or I mean the management themselves to understand the importance of the risk management. No, we have to make sure that every and each person in the organization, we can understand the importance of the risk management. And we have a rule and we have a responsibility in this program. We have to understand the risk. We have to uh, raise their voice if they find any weakness or any risks in any uh, process or asset or thread or whatever. Then if, if you have to, uh, arrange uh, awareness sessions. Awareness session it is very important. Of course, risk management awareness session, it will be very close to the risk management uh, sessions or awareness sessions with the security. But again, the risk management, it has to con 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 control or concentrate on the risk management, importance of the risk management for the organization. What are your uh, roles and responsibilities in the risk management? Also, the organization, we have to integrate the risk management concept in the business processes. Don't do any process or make any change to any process or eliminate any process or touch any process without a risk management. This it will be very important. If you are not able to do this, then this means that you will be in a trouble. You will be in a trouble because this means that you are not having a proper uh, organization or you don't have proper uh, 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 infrastructure. 
Also, the risk management, it should be a part of the daily operations, whatever any daily operation, even it's very simple because these simple things, it can create a crisis. Yeah, for example, uh, Microsoft, we announce a patch for the Windows server. Okay, that's fine. Just uh, load the patch. If you load the patch and the server is down, this means that all the operation, it will be on hold and this, it will be crisis. Although it is very simple. Just I want to upload the patch, and this it makes sense. It's a part of the patch management. But of course, you have to uh, think about it. You must have uh, this environment and so on. Also, we have to encourage the management to take the decisions based on the risk management information. It is, it's nonsense that I will take uh, uh, any uh, decision from the business based on my opinion or whatever the, 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 the uh, factors behind the decision. But if I have uh, a new business line, a new process, new activity, I have to perform a risk management and risk assessment for this process and check if this risk, uh, the risks it can be mitigated and the uh, new process, it will be uh, additional value for the organization or not. And based on the uh, results of the risk assessment, I will make sure that, uh, okay, I can go ahead with this process or I have to. Finally, management, we must have a regular management review. This uh, regular management review for the risk management program, of course. This is very important, my friend, and it's a mandatory part in the ISO 27005, and even in 2001 as risk management. In risk management, the management, they must have a management review. They have, must have a uh, yearly meeting at least for board of directors or whatever. And they have to study the uh, suggestions of the uh, customers, the vendors, partners, employees. We have to check the reports from the internal audits. We have to check the reports for measurement and uh, monitoring uh, tools. We have to check any suggestions from the stakeholders. We have to check if the uh, organization, uh, it's able to implement the uh, risk uh, management program as uh, documented. And based on this revision, if they find that there are some uh, non-conformity, then we have to work very close to close these conformities and uh, solve these problems. Well, now till this moment, as a part of the first process for the risk management program, we found that the uh, management, we are very cooperative. First thing, they define the objectives, then they provide the leadership and commitment for the risk management program. Also, they assigned or they hired some person for as a risk management program manager. This is very important. We must have an owner. We must have an owner for the risk management. Now, the management, they decide that we will have a risk management program manager. This is a person who is responsible for monitoring the uh, risk management, develop the program, uh, make the analysis, handling the teams, and all this stuff. Okay, management, we have to decide who is the risk owner. What is the criteria of risk owner? How you can choose the risk owner? XYZ company management, they define that the risk owner is the business process owner. Then whoever the uh, process owner, he will be responsible and he will be uh, owner for the risk. Why? Because we believe that we have the uh, outstanding understanding of the process and we know what is the vulnerability of the process, uh, activities, assets, values, and so on. Then if we have any process, you are in a factory for uh, developing uh, or manufacturing a specific product, you have five or six processes in manufacturing. For example, uh, you have a factory for uh, 
manufacturing uh, Pepsi or Coca-Cola or whatever, when this means that you have a process for the uh, manufacturing or uh, uh, preparing the liquid itself, the cola itself, and you have another process for the, the cans uh, to, uh, I mean, manufacture the cans, then you have another process for uh, put these liquids in the cans. These are multiple processes. Each process has its own owner. Each of these processes, of course, it has some weakness, and these weaknesses, of course, this. Uh, 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 are very clear for the owner of these processes, which he can be able to tell you what are these weaknesses and how it can affect the organization and how, how it can affect the line of production and how can affect the uh, achievements of the goals and objectives of the company itself. Also, they have to provide the authority and resources for a uh, uh, risk owner. If you define the risk owner, it is very important to give them the power. It is not the matter of give them responsibility without give them any support. This it will not work. Okay, I am responsible for it. I give me some money because I want to have some security controls. No, we don't have any money. I, I need some people to uh, work with me. No, we don't have. Then what is the benefit of the risk owner? Just you want to say that we have an owner. What will be the benefit? But you have to give them the authority and you have to give them the resources as well. Then they will be able to uh, mitigate the risks and maintain its effectiveness to the uh, accepted level. Uh, you will find also the risk owner. Now we define the risk owner that the risk owner, he should coordinate with the risk manager. You remember when we said that the management, they defined uh, a team or they defined uh, a person, sorry, who will be responsible as the risk manager, uh, risk management. Now the person uh, who is uh, appointed as risk management, he should uh, arrange with the risk owners, then they can understand the risk and what are the possible controls which it can minimize the risk uh, consequences and the likelihood. Till this moment, we are building our risk management program. We did not touch any, any assets or whatever, but now we are in the meeting room. We are working with the management together. We are trying to understand the objectives of the risk management. We want to have a commitment and support from our management. We have to define very clearly who will be the owner of the risk management. All these tasks are done in the meeting room and with our management to define what will be our responsibilities and how the risk management it will be handled in the organization. When we risk the management, we have to, def to develop the risk management policy. It is very important to have a risk management policy. If you don't have a policy, this means that you are not able to understand what is the objectives or what is the intent and what is the commitment of the management for the risk management. Then the risk management policy, it is similar to the security policy. If you want to have a, a, a secure uh, environment, you have to define what are the minimum security requirements and the levels which you require. Also, you have to define the risk management policy here. The risk management uh, uh, policy, it should be very uh, clear. You have to define what are the objectives for the risk management, which we defined before. And we said that we have to protect our assets to be able to uh, achieve our goals and the business. You have to define what are the roles and responsibilities. Each person, he have a role and he have a responsibilities related to the risk management, even his inside uh, internal or external stakeholders. You have to define all these roles and responsibilities. The risk management integration to business processes, you have to define how a business processes, it will be integrated with the risk management. You have to define that uh, that makes the risk management as a part into change management. If there is any change in the organization, it must be trigger a risk management uh, process first before approving any change management. Also, it should be a part uh, uh, of the daily organization operation. This, it should be uh, mentioned in the uh, risk management policy. We, you have to, uh, uh, as a, a person working in this organization, you have to understand how this the information it will be uh, available and uh, how risk management it will be a part of the process and the daily operations. Also, you have to encourage the uh, management decision based on risk. 
you have to define management decision based on the uh, 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 risk. When the risk policy it will say that, for example, if you have any new activity or uh, any new changes, this it will not be uh, acceptable without a clear risk uh, and security controls, which it will elim eliminate these risks. Finally, you have to improve the risk culture. Risk culture, it is very important. In some situation, people, we are afraid to say that we found some weakness because we are afraid of the direct managers or whatever, any uh, people who are responsible about them because we are afraid that they are pointing to a, a manager and saying he is not doing his exercise properly. And this is not the scenario because the scenario here, we want to improve ourselves when we have to I like it if we have any weakness. By France, we have a weakness in this process. We want to take care about it because I am afraid that it may affect the operation and it may uh, get the uh, line of uh, manufacturing down for any reason. Then if we, you must provide them a contact person. He may be the risk manager, for example. We have to communicate with him. We have to explain to them uh, their thoughts, their ideas about the risk management, about the weakness, about the threads, uh, about the security controls, how it can be mitigated, and all this information. Give me, my friends, this, it will provide you a great source of information for the risk management, and you will never get this such type of information from books and training courses. But this information is coming from first-line people. You will find that this information, it's really valuable because they are the people who are dealing with these weakness and these assets, and they understand this information very well better than anyone in the company. Okay. Still, we are in the risk management program. You have to define a risk management methodology. All what we explained, it's considered as risk management guidelines and standards. But methodology is the method to do something how you can do the risk management. We have a lot of methods uh, for doing risk management, EPIOS, Octave, Mihari, CRAM. You can choose any one of them. Of course, it is, this is not the right time to discuss all these methods because each one of them, uh, it has a training course for three or four days, but just keep in your mind that we have a lot of other uh, of methods which you can do the uh, risk management, some of them uh, in Europe, some in the States, whatever, but, but these are the methods which you have to choose from if you want to implement the risk management in, in your organization. Then we have another approach which is very important. You have to define it in risk management program. What is the uh, uh, approach for the risk management? Is it asset-based risk management or scenario-based risk management? What is the difference? The asset-based risk management, it is, uh, you have to define the uh, assets, define the assets, define the value, define the threads, define the risks and the controls. That's great. For scenario, it is not like that. In the scenario, we are defining a scenario, a specific scenario which can affect the organization. For example, it can affect be a flooding or natural disaster, volcano or flooding or earthquake. This it can affect a group of resources uh, and assets, and this is a specific uh, scenario. You can use one of them you can use the asset based uh, scenario or the uh, asset based uh, approach or the scenario based approach uh, unfortunately each one of them it has its pros and cons in the asset uh, based uh, approach is very easy it's very easy to understand what are the assets the vulnerabilities the risks and so on but actually it will not be the real situation because you may be, you will not be infected with uh, uh, risks with specific threads, no, uh, or in, with a specific yeah. assets. Uh, in some situation, it may be affect the uh, asset itself, or if there is other asset, it will be infected. Then they, it will have another effect on other asset, and so on. Then you cannot take the assets as individuals and work with them, because by the end of the day, it, it, it's, it's, it's as a whole scenario. Then you will say, okay, then do you think that the scenario-based, it will be better? Again, scenario-based, it will be better because this, it will provide a 
scenario. I have a flood, I have uh, earthquake, I have a power uh, problem, I have uh, whatever. But again, the, the main uh, concern here that uh, we cannot guarantee that this it will be the same scenario which it will happen exactly uh, during the disaster. We may have something else in different. Then when we had the risks and we have the security controls, these security controls are built for a specific scenario. Then by the end of the day, when we had uh, the risk itself or the real risk, it may require some additional security controls which it were not taken in our consideration. For example, you will say that, okay, if it's scenario based, you will say that the power, it will be down, uh, source of the power, the data center, it will be down. Then you will say, okay, that's great, no problem. I will have UBS and I will have a power generator. But when we had the problem of the power, we discovered that there, there was another problem, which we did not take it in our consideration during the risk management uh, study in the case of a scenario based approach. Uh, what was this problem? It is that the uh, generator, it does not work. Why? Because the fuel tank, it was empty. Fuel tank, it was empty. Then the data center is still down. Although we make the exercise, we had a good uh, uh, list of risks, security controls, and all this stuff. But unfortunately, we did not take this in our consideration. Then, if the asset-based approach is not workable and the scenario-based approach is not workable, what we have to do? From my point of view, uh, from my practical experience, to work uh, 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 mix and match, both of them together. If you are working with assets and scenario based, it will be better. This it will be uh, better because this it will provide you uh, possibilities for a lot of things. Then we we took the in consideration the scenario, and on the other hand, also the asset. When uh, if I have the scenario for the power, and if I have the asset based approach, I will consider the uh, generator uh, as a part of the uh, asset based approach. This, it will cover most of the scenarios. I am not saying that you will cover 100%. I will be a liar. But of course, you have to uh, improve your scenarios by time. Because of course, risk management is not one, uh, one day function. This is a continuous improvement function process in, in your organization. And it should have a very dedicated team. When this being bad today, your scenario, it will be active by 70%. The next year, it will be 75 After five years, it will be 90 95%, and so on. Then you have to define what will be the approach which you have to choose. Then you have to define what is the basic criteria for evaluating the risk management. How you will evaluate the impact. For example, the uh, XYZ company, we said, whatever any cost uh, less than 15,000, the impact, it will be considered low. If it's between 15 and 30, medium. 30 and 45, high. For more than 45, it will be critical. Okay. The likelihood, again, low that it be, the risk it happen once every three years. For medium, it will happen once every year. High, one to five, ti uh, one to five times every year. Critical, more than five times per year. That's fine. We agreed about these values. How you will calculate the risk level? Risk level, it is risk impact times the risk likelihood. Then, if you have low, it will be one. Medium, it will be two. High, it will be three. Critical, it will be four. As example, if you have risk level low and likelihood medium, then the risk level, it is one multiply two equal to one. This is the... Uh, risk impact and uh, two this is the risk likelihood which is medium medium it's two when the risk level here it is two okay how we will define the risk acceptance xyz company management they decide that whatever any uh, risk level less than two, it will be accepted. Whatever any risk level less than two, it will be accepted. 
when if I make my calculation and the risk level is less than two, it is accepted. What do you mean by accepted? There is no need to do any security controls or anything, just to monitor this uh, uh, accept, uh, this uh, uh, risk. The risk evaluation, of course, that you have to compare the risk level which we cal you calculated against the risk acceptance level. If it's one acceptable, if it's two, you have to define what will be the risk three. Now we finished the process number one for the risk management program. We defined a lot of information. Let's go very quickly for this information again to keep it uh, 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 in your mind. What are the information which we define during the risk management program development? We define the objectives of the risk management. We define the commitment and the leadership of the uh, XYZ company management. We define the risk manager. We define the risk owner criteria. We define the risk management policy and the contents of the policy. We define the methodology which you will follow in uh, risk assessment. Uh, you would find the risk approach if it's asset based or scenario based. You would find the basic criteria in evaluating the impact, the likelihood, and the uh, uh, risk level. You would find the risk acceptance and the risk uh, evaluation. Uh, do you have any questions? Are you still there? Yes, uh, yes engineer, Osama, for, uh, <clears throat> for the, 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 you told us that the risks should be centralized with the one owner. Okay, or the owner of the risk who is the business owner. Uh, for example, if I am in, in uh, is there kind of any governance body that can be injected within well, the one minute, uh, Muhammad? I'm not saying that all the risks it should be centralized one with one owner. No, the business process owner. I know the business. Yes, you are right. Well, if you have 100 business process and you have 100 owner, then this it will must be uh, uh, the ownership distributed across these 100 bits. Okay. What is but, the question? Yeah, the question is for the, uh, uh, the management of risk enterprise wide. Should I make an, a governor somebody okay, within the enterprise to manage the risk? Uh, with the, <clears throat> based on the business, but because if I'm going into a single business process and I create uh, an owner for this single process will be the risk owner, then I'll have, uh, by the number of the business processes within the organization, I'll have the number of um, risk owners. So its manageability will be much difficult. Well, frankly speaking, I did not understand the uh, what you are saying, Yani? I, I don't know. I have a problem in the uh, sound. Yes. One minute. Yeah. Uh, I want. Yes. Yeah. Yani, uh, your voice it's not uh, yes. clear. Can you repeat the question again, yes. please? Okay. If I am assigning, if I am assigning the owner uh, of the risk as the uh, owner of the process. So I'll have in a, in a big organization, I'll have the, the number of risk owners will be by the number of the business processes within the organization itself. So, okay. on, a, so on, a, on a granular level, okay, of the organization, I will not be able to manage all the risks within the organization. Why? Um, because, because actually for each and every process, Okay, uh, who is uh, which is assigned to a one owner? Okay, I'll have to um, uh, let me say inject the uh, the uh, the uh, the risk. Uh, let me say management, uh, either it is a solution or advisory or or process flow or a chain of a process or something like this. But yani, is there kind of let me say a container a, an upper container for the process? Okay, a value stream, for example, to manage the risk bare scenario, like we are maintaining it, managing scenario-based or a scenario-based approach. Will the scenario be 
align the, to the value stream or the value chain, a single value chain, for example, a recruitment, for example, um, uh, software testing um, uh, process, for example, something like this, or I should go into the very detailed process. Okay. This it depends. This it depends. You got my question, Mr. Oh, uh, not hundred percent, frankly speaking. Yeah, not hundred percent because I am I am afraid that you are asking about a specific scenario. But this scenario, it's it's not clear for me. But uh, and for example, for example, the 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 hiring process, for example, okay, mm. the recruitment. Okay. 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 I, I have from applying it the CV until uh, being employed. It includes the many process, interviewing, blah, 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 something like this. Okay. And, and if I am def defining the, uh, let me say, these multiple processes and for each and the single, each and every single process, I am going to manage the risk, then I will have, let me say, kind of bottleneck within the um, operational stream of work. Okay. If I'm injecting, uh, the risk management with each and every single process. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, so what I, so I, what I mean that, is there any higher level than the process that we can manage the risk? Okay, for example, if we are adopting the values, uh, the, uh, the uh, scenario-based risk management approach, can we map it to a, 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 a for example, a value stream uh, point of view? And it, it will be mapped the bare value stream. Okay, not I think I got your point. And, uh, it's a valid point, although I don't uh, agree about it. Uh, usually, especially in big organization, in enterprise organization, yani, uh, yani I don't want to mention names here, but in enterprise organization, what you are mentioning here, this, it's a real scenario which we are facing. What do we mean? Risk management is considered as obstruction for the business. Or yes. it is considered as a delay for the business. Yes. We are delaying the business. Let me take the example which you mentioned. I want to hire uh, Osama in uh, the organization. He is a good person and I want to have him on my team because I really need his skills in the uh, operation. Mm -hmm. And uh, I found that if I want to hire Osama, this process, it will take two or three months. Come on. Why do you, you need three months? What is the process which you require three months? But we will tell you, we want to have uh, background checks. We have to check if he has any criminal record. We have to, a lot of things which, from your point of view, I don't care about it, and this it will be a waste of our time, and we need him on ground uh, and all this stuff. But if you don't mind, just I want to tell you something. This is a, a wrong conception. This is a wrong conception. Because by the end of the day, just I can hire Osama immediately. I can tell him, okay, that's great, no problem. Now you are here, take this good book, this is your desk, start your operation. When you found that Osama, he has a criminal record, he has a problem and so on, then after some time, after he was uh, injected in your uh, community and he have the user credentials and he have an access for uh, accessing the data, uh, after some time, two or three weeks, we discovered that he is not qualified or he has problems uh, with his ex-company before and he, were, he was terminated and all this stuff. Then in this time, you will be in a real trouble, in a real trouble. Why? Because now he had credentials, uh, uh, he had access for the data. You don't know if he still something or not. Usually, uh, the people, they are called the uh, security or uh, department as no department. No department. What, what do you mean, you know, uh, uh, for anything? No, we don't agree. For security department, no, we don't agree, no. It is not no department, but we have to clarify the risks and everything. This, it will take some time. We can understand that, yes, the process, it will take three months, okay. 
we have to be patient because this risk assessment is very important. We have to do this risk assessment. I have a new process. Let me give you another example, uh, Muhammad. Uh, now I am working in a factory and I have a line of product and based on our marketing activities, we discovered that our competitor, he, try, he is uh, uh, starting to produce another product which will take us out of the uh, operation immediately. Then the marketing team and the sales team immediately, we want to develop this process, we want to develop this process. The risk management team, they came, they said, okay, let's take the uh, exercise, this, it will take one month, then they said, in this case, we will lose the business. Of course, this, okay, I can, but I can understand that we will lose the business. I'm not saying that we have to eliminate the risk assessment. No, we have to do the risk assessment. We have to uh, minimize the time and instead of doing it in one month, let's try to do it in the three weeks or two weeks. But if I uh, develop the, 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 the process, which the marketing plan and the sales department we want to implement in our product line, it can affect other products, can affect other activities, it can have a negative effect on our operations and our uh, income and our products and they have uh, 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 the, the, the risks more than the uh, opportunities which we are expecting out of it. Then whatever any decision it will take with a rush, we will have a problem with it. From my point of view and from my experience in the market, and I uh, 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 yani faced this problem in uh, multiple organizations, in the enterprise uh, organizations and in the small organization. After some time, you will feel, okay, I think this risk management, it was great because you know that problem when it was happened, uh, we know that it can happen and the owner, he accepts the risk. When, when the problem happened, no one, he will be able to question you, why do you have this problem? We were very clear, we mentioned that this is risky. I'm not saying that you have to eliminate the activity or avoid the activity. It's not your decision. Your decision that you have to clarify the risks and the business owner, we have to say, yes, I will accept the risk or I have to mitigate the risk. Uh, I hope that I answered your question. Yes, yes, yes. I, yani as a as a practice, as a kind of uh, uh, optimum practice, okay, this is the risk. How the risk management should be. Uh, either it will affect the business, the business operations, or not. This is up to the business stakeholders. You are right. You are right. Usually, what I am telling to my uh, trainees, it is not our decision to say yes or no. Our decision. Uh, our role to uh, uh, define or clarify the risks and the security issues and leave it to the owner. Mm. Now, suppose that you are working in your company, Mohammed, and uh, tomorrow your manager, he told you, you have to drop this project and visit other customers. Mm. You will tell him, if I drop this customer, I will be in a trouble. He may raise a, 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 a complaint to the management and we will lose our uh, business. He will tell you, I will accept this risk. Okay, that's fine. If you would say, no, no, I will not do this. Uh, it's not uh, uh, right. No, it's not our decision to say, uh, to, to say that. Why? Because in some situation, my friends, we don't have enough information or the complete picture which we can be able to judge if this is the right decision or not. But as a business, we are aware about that. Okay, I will take a risk because if I not take the risk right now, this it may affect my market share, it may affect my reputation, it may affect whatever the, 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 the impact which it can be the, uh, on the organization. Okay. 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 You are most correct. Okay. The, the, the second process of the context establishment that you have to understand the organization context, you have to understand the stakeholders, uh, their expectations, what are the risk management objectives, basic criteria, scope and boundaries. Of course, we covered all this information. And if you want to understand all this information for XYZ company, what you have to do, go to the introduction for the XYZ company ask for an interview with XYZ company management. What is your mission? Why you are here? 
What is your vision? What is your uh, position after five years? What are your goals and objectives? Who are the stakeholders? Uh, what are the expectations of your customers? What are the expectations of your vendors? Uh, if you want to implement a risk management, do you want to implement the risk management now for the whole product side? For example, in XYZ company, they would say, okay, I don't want to implement for the uh, shelf on shelf uh, applications and customized applications. I will implement it for customized applications only. Why? Because if I want to implement it for both of them, this it will be very complicated and the uh, possibility of failure, it will increase but I want to implement the risk management by in phases. First phase, I will take the implementation for the uh, department of the, uh, what we can say, the uh, uh, ready uh, uh, on-shelf applications, then uh, for the uh, customized applications and so on. Then this risk context uh, establishment, it's very important to understand the nature of the organization. Okay. The risk identification phase. Uh, first thing you have to define what are the assets. You have to define what are the assets. The XYZ company, they understand the importance and criticality of the assets. And based on the uh, objectives and the goals, the mission, the vision, we can find out that, that we have primary assets, which are considered as the uh, software development life cycle process and activities, uh, developers team, uh, service desk processes and activities, uh, application codes, uh, security and privacy by design processes, activities in application development. These are the primary assets. And we have supporting assets. What are we supporting assets? Which are the networks, the internet connections, servers, workstation, laptops, and so on. Then this is the method how you can define the assets. You have to define what are the important assets. If you are going to an organization and you don't know how you can start uh, uh, first, understand what are the processes and activities of this organization, what they are doing. And when you start to touch these things, you will start to discover this step by step. You will understand that, okay, we, we have manufacturing, then this manufacturing, we have processes, these processes, we have a group of activities, this group of activities, we have documentation, we have uh, requirements, we have supporting assets, and so on. When you will be able to figure out all all the assets. Also, you have to define the asset value. And as we mentioned, the asset value, it is very important because this, it will define your priority in implementing the security controls. Who is the best person who can define the asset value? It is the business owner who is on the process. And also, it is very important, my friends, to understand that when you will define the asset value, it is not the value, uh, financial value only. I'm not saying that this server, it will cost $1,000. This is not the way of calculation. It may be one server, $1,000, but it has some uh, confidential data, which a patent for a company, which uh, it costs to become company one million US dollar for these patents. And by the end of the day, this server, which is uh, called, it's cost $1,000, it, it's real value for the organization, one million US dollars. Then you have to define the value of the asset for the organization itself. You have to define the direct cost and the indirect cost. The direct cost, this is very easy to calculate. How much uh, do you require to replace the assets, uh, operation efforts, uh, revenue loss, and so on. And the indirect cost, this it will be lost uh, uh, business opportunity, uh, reputation loss, market share loss, financial loss. These are the important information which you have to define the asset values. By the way, if you uh, want some guidelines 
how you will be able to uh, calculate asset values, you will find very valuable information in the appendix of the ISO 27005. In the appendix of ISO 27005, you will find some information which it will be very helpful to help you how you can calculate the value of the assets. Uh, also, you have to define what are the threads for the uh, assets. These threads, of course, be, uh, you can utilize ready-made databases. For example, uh, in the ISO 27005, there are threads categories, and this category, it is, uh, you will find it in the appendix of the ISO 27005. They are, they are a group of uh, threads which you can take them as a start point. Of course, this is not all the threads. You have to think practically about your environment as well, because in some situation, this threads, it may be valid for some specific areas, but not be valid for others. And there may be some threads in your site which are not clear or are not popular, then they are not included in these categories. But from my point of view, this it will be a good start and you have to think and make some workshops. This is very important, not to work alone as a risk manager. You are not working alone in a company. You have to make a, a lot of uh, workshop with the business owners. You have to explain to them what you are looking for, what are the threats which threaten us. Then they will start to give you very valuable information which you will not find it in any other location. Especially they will have the information about their process and how it can be uh, affected. Uh, also, you have to define uh, a steering committee for the risk assessment. This it will be very important. This it will have the risk manager, C level management, and these people they will be able to help you to understand the business and goals objectives. Also, you have to uh, assign uh, not you, but I mean you have to work very close with the uh, divisions, different divisions that to have a contact person from each. Uh, department to be a part of your committee or steering committee uh, or the risk management committee. The, each one of them, he will represent his department and he will be able to evaluate the risk and how it will affect the operation and what is the effect of this risk on uh, the department itself uh, and how it will affect the uh, company in achieving its business end goal. Finally, you must have the risk management team, which they will work close with you to develop all these informations and the security controls and to start to monitor all these informations. Vulnerabilities, it is, has the same concept as the threads. Again, we have some ready categories. Again, you will find it in ISO 27001, the categories. You must have a workshop with the steering committee. You must have workshop with the business division owners. You have a risk management team. My friends, please work very close with the business processes owners. They will be really helpful. They will provide you more information than what you can get from third party consultant. I know some companies is they spend uh, millions for risk management. And when I had the report and I had a look on, it, on it, I, I told them this is very poor because what you are telling me it is uh, generic. You are telling me some generic information. It is not something great to your environment. This, it will be great if I want to act as a consultant when I can provide this document to my customer. But this is not a risk management for your organization. Then they told me, okay, come and do it yourself. If you are uh, saying that our exercise, it's, it's not good. We spent only one year, although they spent more than three years in this exercise, we spent only one third of the time. And we did an excellent risk management program for them, better than the one which they spent more than million, one million in it. Why? Because I told them I don't need any uh, consultant, 
I don't need anyone. I want only to work very close with the business owners. I start to work with the business owners. I make awareness session for them. I explain to them what we are looking for. I explain to them what is the meaning of vulnerability. I explain to them what is the meaning of threads. I explain to them how we can calculate the impact and I give them the full information. Now we are very interesting to discover these things. They try to help me. They give me some risks and when we uh, propose these risks to the management, they said, frankly speaking, we were not expecting these results. Now you are covering some risks, which we don't know that we are facing these risks at all. Although this information, it was provided to us from the first client, uh, uh, not the, even the business owner, because you know the business owner, usually he will be a manager and he will have his team who are working with them. If you are sitting with this team and asking them about what they face, they are saying we faced a problem, uh, so and so, then you will catch this problem and you start to understand it, you will ask the business owner, he will give you more information. Then today we start with a list of uh, 10 risks. A day next, we discovered that we have 20. After one week, we discovered we have 100 risks. The day after, a week after, we discovered that we had 200 risks. And the most important that they are real risks. We are real risks, which we have to highlight. It is very easy to tell you, okay, uh, you want to make a uh, risk assessment? Okay, uh, take care uh, vo uh, for uh, volcanoes. Volcanoes, it's very important. Uh, it can affect your operation. Come on, what volcanoes? Saudi Arabia does not have volcanoes. Then, for example, if you will tell me that this is done or, or produced by a third party, I'm not saying that all of them are not... Uh, 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 they are bad, but we don't have the experience which the, the, the team themselves, we have it. They understand their infrastructure. They understand their activities. And please work with them very close and understand it with them because this, it will be real help for you. Again, we have to define the uh, risk uh, impact and consequences. And I think we discussed this in the uh, previous risk management program and we find low, medium, high, this will be the consequences. And we defined what are the security controls which we have it. Uh, we have to understand why we are looking for the existing controls, because this it will save some money. If we have an existing controls, then we have to take it our consideration. There is no need to pay additional money for something which I have it already on ground. And I have to make sure that if they are effective, if they are effective, they are doing or achieving the uh, security objective. This it will be very important because if it's not effective and it's not achieving the security objective, then this means that this control I cannot take it in my consideration or I can take it in con my consideration, but I have to make some uh, modification or find a uh, tuning for it. Uh, I really appreciate if we can have the uh, break. Okay. Now we will go through the risk analysis uh, process. And we will try to implement the information which we learned from the previous uh, processes. For the scenario number one, where the privacy data leakage, the consequences that bad repetition in the market, uh, in compliance with lo local laws and regulations, uh, current or losing current and future business, losing current customers, legal cases against XYZ company, of course, legal cases, this is a crisis, then this means that the consequences, it will be as critical, it will be number four. What is the likelihood that this scenario, it can happen once every three years? Then this means that the uh, level is one and the likelihood level it is one. Then the risk level here, it will be four. This for risk number one. For risk number two, we found that the consequences, it will be only high. Why? Because in this case, you don't have any uh, cases uh, or legal cases. 
uh, when this it will be consequences as high. And again, it can happen once every three years when the likelihood level is one and the risk level, it will be three. Finally, for the last uh, scenario, you will find for the distributed dial of service that the consequences it will be high, the likelihood level it will be medium, where this uh, dial of service it can happen once every year, and the risk level it will be six. This is the way how we can calculate the risk level for the three uh, scenarios. In the risk evaluation, the risk level for uh, number one, it is four. The uh, scenario, the other uh, for risk two, three, for this six. If you can remember, we mentioned that the evaluation, whatever any risk less than two, it will be only monitored. We will not have any actions. Uh, based on the, our calculation, this means that all the risks, it should be taken in our consideration for treatment. We should take action for all the uh, uh, rests because as you can see that the risk level for all of them, it's more than uh, two, it's more than two. For the risk treatment, scenario number one, we define that the risk level is four and the management decide that we will mitigate this risk. We will implement some security controls to minimize the risk. For uh, scenario number two, again, it is three, and again, we want to medicate. Scenario number three, although it is higher, it is higher, but we said that we want to transfer. What do we mean by transfer? That they will uh, distribute the denial of service, they will give it to a subcontractor to work on it. Uh, you know, Alchemy and all these companies who are protecting your infrastructure and organization published over the internet through, uh, again, is denial of service. Uh, this is the XYZ company. They decide that we, to protect against style of service. We don't have the resources or the money or the skills which we can do this supplies. And it's, with, it's better to be transferred to uh, other uh, vendor who can do this exercise on their behalf. In the risk acceptance, you can remember that we mentioned that the XYZ company, they decide that they ac ac accept the uh, risk treatment plan and the risk owner also accept the risk treatment plan. And they accept the residual risk. If the residual risk is less than two, if the residual risk, uh, uh, as we mentioned here, the, this risk is it's four, three, six, but after we implement the control, these values, of course, it must decrease. If it will increase to a value less than two, mean that it will be one, then it is accepted and we will accept the residual risk. If it's not less than one, uh, sorry, less than two, this means that we have to work more and we have to find other controls or to have other treatment. In some situation, I am not able to decrease this uh, one. Uh, all the efforts, it's lead to the risk level two. Then if the management accept it, then we have to accept the risk level which is due. Otherwise, we have to avoid this uh, uh, at all and there is no way that we will be able to do uh, anything related to this. The risk monitoring. The risk monitoring, it will be very important because uh, we have to uh, understand what are the factors which are affecting the risks as the internal organization context, external organization context, business needs and requirements, stakeholders' needs and requirements, laws and regulations, international standard changes. Then, what is the XYV company decide? They decide that they will develop new team for monitoring risks and control operations. This is very important. We need a team to start to monitor this. Also, we need to have the KPIs and KRI, key performance indicators and key risk indicators to monitor the risks and to monitor the performance. And the team shall be reported to the CEO. The team, it will be reported to the CEO. This is mean that the XYV company may decide to uh, introduce a new department in the company uh, to monitor the traffic. 
The risk treatment plan, this is a, a, a template for the risk treatment plan, which it will be used in XYZ company. It has the uh, risk uh, name, risk description, risk level, treatment option, treatment description, start the date, end the date of the uh, security controls implementation, what are the KPIs and KRI for each risk uh, monitoring, uh, required resources for implementing security controls, who is the responsible person, and who is the person who should report the risk for him. Now, this is a template, the uh, risk name, website, and availability, uh, risk description, distributed denial of service, risk level number six, treatment, as we uh, mentioned before, the XYZ can be defined, uh, we decide to transfer it to a vendor, uh, treatment option, this uh, provide more details about the, 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 the treatment description. Uh, they decide that they will start this service in May uh, 25, 2021, and we, they have to uh, sign the agreement and send the purchase order by uh, June 25, 2021. What will be the KPIs and KRI, the internet service availability and internet access performance? What are the required resources? Monthly fees for the third party subscription, uh, internal resources for uh, monitoring, and the training courses for XYZ company monitoring team. Then we will be able to understand the status of the connection and to able to monitor it. Who will be the responsible person? It is a monitoring team. This is the team which we said that it will be introduced in the uh, XYZ company to monitor all the risks. Uh, reporting, we, we will be reporting to the C-level manager. <clears throat> now you remember, this is the structure of the XYZ company before the risk management uh, in the company. Uh, now, after we uh, implement the risk management, we add two other departments. One of them it is the risk management team who will be responsible for the risk manager, and this risk manager who will be uh, responsible for the uh, risk management. And we will have the security manager, uh, CISO, and he will have the security team as well. And we will be responsible also for the uh, monitoring, uh, the uh, connection, and all the uh, related security issues. I think we are done. We finished the course, and uh, this was the end of the practical scenario. Thank you very much for your attendance. And please, if you have any questions, I am quite ready to answer you.